Hey there, party people. This is a Fender Heavy Metal Strat that I picked up not too long ago. Got a real good deal on it, partly because it is not complete. This is the original bridge, the Kaler Spider 2720, Floyd Rose style, but it has these EMGs in it and all the electronics have been replaced. No case, I got it for a real good deal. So I'm gonna be taking it apart because I don't like EMGs at all. I'm gonna be putting some DiMarzios in it. So it also didn't have a Wang bar. I had to get that from Whammy Parts aftermarket. It fits. They didn't have the stock length of the bar is six inches. This is a seven inch bar because they don't didn't have the stock one. I'm just gonna run through disassembly here. Luckily, it still had the original knobs. These are really hard to find. They're cool, but they're hard to find. And when Fender reissued this instrument, ooh, look how dirty it is under there. They did create new knobs, but they did not make the knobs available for sale aftermarket. So you can't buy those knobs and uh, they go for like 80 bucks on eBay, which is stupid. So I'm just gonna be reusing these and I'm trying to gather my appropriate tools. All right, that's the one I need there. The first thing we're gonna do is take the strings off. So that does require unlocking the strings at the headstock. So I got this little package of Allen wrenches also from Whammy Parts. So we're gonna do that. And that's a critical first step into seeing how much work this guitar is really gonna need to bring back from the EMGs. So it's a relatively small, that's the right one. So this is pretty easy to do. It just works like any other Floyd Rose double locking system. That hole for the locking is pretty shallow. So you definitely want to be careful with it. And, uh, you know, these didn't stick too bad. It's clear that somebody loved this guitar. Took pretty good care of it. We'll see what happens. All right, now we're gonna drop the, and this is gonna drop the bridge down a good bit, but that's okay. I'm just gonna slack those strings off. Uh, with these double locking ones, because this goes both up and down, when I take the strings off, I'll do the low E first just to kind of get the tension off. But then I like to do the treble strings next because those could, depending on how old they are, and these don't look terrible, those could break when the bridge goes down to the body like that. So I just try to prevent flying metal in general as a matter of course. And it's also clear, you can see by how many wraps are on there that whoever put these strings on started with the tremolo against the body because otherwise they wouldn't need that many wraps. All the exciting stuff is happening off camera, but this will just take a second. And also I realize it's gonna be hard to loosen up the lock, other locking end with all the tension off. So I'm gonna put the bar back in so that I can unlock the strings as well. All right, and this is, as you can see, it's a spin on rather than a push on, push in bar. So I am going to try to show this to you. So this is a, these are a little chewed up. It looks like somebody's gotten in there with a screwdriver maybe instead of the appropriate tool. And this is just take a little twist to one side and it's unlocked. Sometimes it takes a little more strength, but I'm trying to be gentle so I don't bust any of these because even though these parts are, some of them are still available from Whammy Parts, they don't have a lot and they are expensive. So it's clear that somebody has taken decent care of this guitar because I can see there's not very much rust. Actually, there's very, very little rust. These things operate smoothly. A neglected one would have a lot of rust and these would be tough to turn. So that should let me pop the strings out. I always like uh, double locking guitars, double lock guitars with double locking systems because you don't have to do anything on this tuner to lock the strings in place. You can just wind them on, which makes them really easy to get on and off. 
And here, now let's take another look at that headstock. You see that's in really good shape. And it's not even, it's not even very dirty. Now the neck, you can see the fingerboard is a little rough in a couple of places. It looks like it's actually may have been patched in a couple of places to tell you the truth. So I can see that the fingerboard needs a little bit of work and I will, and the frets are pretty flat on top. And these are, I don't know if you can see this, but these have some, some, some gouges in them. So definitely needs a fret level before it will be in tippy, tippy top condition, but overall it's in pretty good shape. The back of the neck doesn't look super, super great, but it's smooth. So it hasn't been abused. And you can see here that it is an American example, even though it's got the serial number on the heel of the neck, which is Japanese style, but it's got the Fender USA plate on it. And there's a lot of confusion over where these guitars were made in 1989. And this tracks to 1989 because that's when Fender switched production from Japan to the US. So let's get in the back here. Oh, well, that's crappy. Oh, this is definitely, <laughs> yeah, that's got to come out. Springs are not just whatever, they're sticky too. That was really poorly done, so that'll have to get adjusted. Nah, I don't want the bridge to fall out, so I'm holding on to it. But now the bridge comes out, and ooh, yeah, that's dirty. But the bridge itself, I was thinking I was going to have to take this apart and clean it. Oh, I'm missing a piece here. It must have fallen out. I'll find it because it was there a minute ago. I better find it. That's a little disconcerting. Where the hell did it go? All right, I'm just going to snug these back up to keep any more of those from falling out. As you guys saw, that A string was definitely in there. But I was thinking I was going to have to disassemble this and clean it, but I don't really think I'm going to. It's in really good shape. It just needs to be wiped off, maybe lubricated, patent applied for. Okay, I just turned it over here, and that piece fell out. Where the hell did it go? Uh, maybe it fell on the floor. Well, we'll look for it in a minute. So there, that's insulated, shielded, whatever you want to call it, with a little tab up there. We're going to be taking all this out. So I don't need the battery in there. This was smart, putting that in there to protect the battery. And uh, it all looks good. Two tones and a volume. This is all coming out, though. So since I'm not going to be reusing any of this, I'm just going to cut the wires, which I wouldn't normally do. I would normally just unsolder them and take them off, but I know right now I'm not putting these in anything else because I don't like EMGs. So just to speed the process, I'm gonna cut them. But I'm cutting them as close to the connections as I can. So that leaves plenty of length on the wires when I pull them through. Okay. We'll have to unsolder the two grounds here on this volume pot just to, you know, prevent having to cut those. Well, I might be able to, let's see if I can just cut the solder. Let me get that switch out of there. This right here reinforces that these, that were made in America with Japanese parts with Japanese electronics, because this is this is not an American switch. That's a typical, very typical Japanese or import pickup switch that you would not see in an American-made guitar. This is gonna end up with a three-way switch on it, so I won't be using reusing this, but I don't wanna lose the screws. I'm probably gonna have to undo this here as well. Cut it there. Everything out. Yeah. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to leave the jack in there. We might replace it with something else, but we might just leave it. So even though it's optimized for the EMGs, it would work just fine with a regular pickup. All right, let's get those out. So 
when I get this back together, it's going to have a humbucker and two single coils, but it's going to have a single volume knob. I'm going to use one of those stacked 250, 500K pots. The middle control is not going to be a tone, but rather it's going to be a blender for the two single coils. And then this will be a master tone. That should give me enough that I can get here and cut these there. So cutting the solder means I don't have to heat up my soldering iron. And I'm going to take that little tiny switch out too. Yeah, that's unfortunately been... The washer was taken off, and so the switch, the nut has been ground into the paint, which is not awesome. But what are you going to do? I'll just plug that hole with something, a small bolt or something. Ooh, that is so dirty. All right, now let's get these EMGs out of here. Those are crammed in there pretty good. Let's see, what do I have that can give me a little bit of leverage? some kind of rubbery two nasty EMGs three nasty EMGs oh yeah and they just crammed some junk down in here to cushion or pad or whatever and then because the because the EMGs are a little taller to get the wires to go under they had to gouge out a little hole here which was not done very well that's going in the garbage uh, much rather people use non-adhesive solutions here but you can see how they gouged out a little channel for the wires to go underneath to get in that hole. And it's kind of messed up, but 
too late now. So that's what she looks like with all her pieces taken off and I'll spend some time getting this cleaned up and uh, it'll be ready to rock in no time at all. Of course, I got to find the missing piece of the bridge there that I somehow dropped. That figures, doesn't it? Oh, well. Well, thanks for checking us out. We'll be back with more on this guitar. Found it. It was on the floor. Whew. That's a that's a big relief. Ouch. Oh, I just banged my knee. So it goes in. I'm not sure which way it goes in. So let's loosen up one of the other ones and see which way it goes in. I'm guessing it goes in that this is the back because that looks like a place where a set screw would go. And that would be correct. Now I might take this apart a little more just to clean out. It feels like it's got some old lubrication in there, which old lubrication attracts dirt. And some of these are a little rusty, but this is overall in really good shape. I'm really, I'm a lot happier with it now. And I was when I, you know, the paint hasn't bubbled up. The fine tuners operate smoothly. This is in really surprisingly good shape. So I have no doubts this, this is going to work really well. I'm very happy about this. And we are all ready to get this guitar back into fighting condition. It's got some flaws, no big deal. You can see here, hopefully, the way that the bridge works is there's a slot cut in the base of it that the head of the stud fits into. It's a pretty ingenious way to do it. Pretty ingenious way to do it indeed. And up close like this, you can see it, it does actually need a little bit of work. So I may come back to this this weekend. Okay, I took the neck off and here's what's inside the cavity or the heel. Let's see what we got there. It says five, five, six. You see the micro tilt adjuster is there and fully intact. And then on the neck, we have a B stamp. I don't know what that means. And then ST556HMR. So we can kind of guess that the 556 is the model, their catalog number, because both the body and the neck are stamped 556HM. This is the heavy metal strat, so HMR. Maybe has heavy metal strat. You can see this has been kind of well used over the years. There's nothing on the butt. And you can see here, this is evidence. You can't feel this. You, you can might be able to see it, but I can feel it. There's a, a little ridge on the paint that was really, really tight in there. The neck was. So that was a good neck joint. And you can see there's a little bit of a finish crack on there. Not a huge surprise. So I'm going to clean up a little bit more of this and put that neck back on.